When Einstein said that we need to think about how clocks are synchronized and examples that he presented at the very beginning of his paper on special relativity, the most famous paper of 20th century physics, was talking about something that was in fact in everyday technology. How do you synchronize clocks on railway lines? How do you keep trains from running in opposite directions on the same track from hitting each other? You had to shunt one aside. Coordinating clocks became important. They became important with time zones and scheduling and safety. And Poincaré began his paper on what time meant in physics by talking about the synchronization of clocks to measure longitude difference, to measure how far east and west points on the globe were from one another. And these, both of these scientists were talking about technologies with which they had firsthand knowledge and concern and saw these as important and as making sense. So when later on, years later, decades later, we look back and we say, oh, you know, that's like talking about brains in a vat. It's a kind of philosophical parlor game. That's not what it was for Poincaré and Einstein. These were real technologies that were compelling and central in their time. You might wonder then, what technologies do we encounter that offer us concrete experiences and a range and vocabulary of metaphors, a centrality to our world, that enters into the fabric of physics. And I think one example of that comes from computers, where the idea of information, the exchange of information, and networks, and um, building up to larger structures out of simple interactions. There are many pieces of the linked up computer world that are generative in our grasp of physics. And an example is the idea of information, which has become so central that every child knows about you know, when your disk is full and when it's not, and how much it takes to get there, and how many pictures you can get on your, on your, on your thumb drive. Uh, th that's a vocabulary and a familiarity that is part of our everyday knowledge. And I think it's understanding those technologies that intersect with our, not only our lay understanding, but our scientific understanding that's very generative. We use that all the time in science in talking about what a virus does and what information it takes and what a DNA molecule is and how it stores information and how the information is transferred from here to there. What happens to information at the edge of a black hole? We use our world as we find it and the tools that are generated from it to reason with. They are our toolbox in our age. The computer is to us what the clock was at, and the coordinated clock was at the beginning of the 20th century.